Ugh. Move back to the... And then... Uh, uh. Well, he discovered something very, uh, interesting. Yes, yes. Yeah, it's quite, quite, quite. So... Oh, wait. Being that you found the, the the second the other half of the the other half of the evidence list. Did you examine the two evidence that Piece of evidence you already got in the save for. Uh, like, did you examine the the fragments and? Wait, where's? Oh wait, you gotta talk to Gumshoe about them. Oh, I didn't. I didn't prove what that thing had to do with anything. Oh wait. Oh, no, wait, wait. Cause we got. Isn't don't don't. Pieces of evidence remind remind you of something. Like what? Like what evidence do you? You got a fragment of something and like a piece of cloth from that safe. So what could they? Let's like present the. Is there nothing to talk to Gumshoe about? About those two pieces of evidence they got in the safe? <sighs> okay, what do you. <laughs> I don't think you're supposed to present stuff, I supposed to go to supposed to like Oh that's not uh Have you actually cho examined the safe in already? Like you already got what's in there? Yeah. Oh yes, suppose. Oh yeah, yes. Remember that fragment? It's, it would be the last piece of this. Like you once assembled a jar together, and like you're missing one piece. Yeah, I already did that fragment. Not there. You already. Yeah, we did it already. God, queue up. Okay, then I was just. <laughs> I'm supposed to. <laughs> okay. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> now, you know, you don't make sense anymore. I don't think you have to look at this. Hey, I know what this is. So you want to take some fingerprints? That's a great idea. Later. Say you. All right, go to town. Sheesh. What are you doing? Why are you sticking out your hand like that? Go ahead. <laughs> take my fingerprints. <laughs> um, it's not your fingerprints we want to take. Huh? Come on, this isn't time for jokes. We're talking about the clock we found the safe. Oh, <laughs> Oh, yeah, I knew that. The one with the handprint on it, right? Sheesh. What's your sense of humor? Let's check your friends. Spring of the power. Then, then blow on the hand. What do you want? Mom, I don't know how to be told by a man. Alright, let's get it. Huh. <laughs> Mom. Um, this one. Yay! Wait, what's my... I think, is, it, is this the last fingerprinting cart in this game? To be honest, I have no idea what button I use to... I don't know what my input is to... Well, probably, I, think, I think this is the last fingerprinting... Alright, uh, 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 uh. 
Oh no. I, 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 hmm. Oh, okay. They, oh, there you go. Oh, it's horrible. Give my best shot. The counter result won't be any good for matching prints. Fingerprints doing on here. Hey, you found a match? Whose fingerprints are they? Huh? Oh, uh, seems your prints are too old. They're not clear enough to get a match. Oh, well, that's too bad. I thought they'd be dark prints. Psst. Hey, you. Well, well, this is well, this is bad because what? Because Emma. What's going on here? What's going on here? What are the kids doing prints doing on the chief's safe? Don't ask me. Just give me this information from Emma for now. Okay, this is okay. Well, this is a problem well, because to this... thanks to your ID card, we were able to get some hard evidence. Now that's not very kind, is it? Uh oh. What's... In other words, if it wasn't for his ID card, he would have been useless. Isn't that right, you and the coat? Eek! Chief Yan! You didn't think you'd be back so soon? Fortunately, I'm a man who believes in signs. As I was walking to my meeting, I happened to get a look out the window and saw a stray dog run into a pole. Just then, I thought I was Sir Detective. You mean me, sir? Now then, I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you all to leave. <coughs> sir, sorry. Oh, you and the coat. Yep, me, sir. Drop off your ID card on the way out. You won't be needing it anymore. But, sir. Now get out. Oh, man. Yes, sir. We'll be on our way to that. Wait, you. The one without the spiky hair. Don't go yet. Me, sir? I like a word with you. But sir, I'm not a licensed scientific investigator yet. You with the spiky hair, you're free to go. Oh no. Mr. Wright. Okay, so Gant wants to talk to Emma more, so. Look, pal. If I told you if I told you once, I've told you a thousand times. Chief's office is off limits. But no, you just have to go in and see you there, like, didn't you? I thought you said you didn't care anymore if you were fired. Yeah, but if I knew it'd be like this, I never would have said it. Now that I've seen the evidence Chief Gant was hiding in his office, I think I'm finally starting to get the picture. It's hard to believe anyone could keep quiet about all this now. Anyway, you listening to me? I'm gonna try to smooth things out over with the Chief again. Later, pal. After that, I heard from She said the police want to ask her some questions, so she'll be busy for the rest of the day. Oh, I see. So the chief asked Emma to come in for questioning? It's no use thinking about it. Tomorrow's the final day in court. I'm committed to doing everything I can to defend you, which is why I'm here. I've already told you all I can. What you've told me over these past couple of days is absolutely nothing. Not a single use. Really, I believe I did mention something quite important. Something I told you right at the beginning. I said that I was the one who stabbed the said to put him. You know, I think I finally figured it out. Who is, who is your hiding behind those words? You yeah, did a good job mentoring you. I'm rather jealous. It seems Edgeworth was right. Edgeworth, once you're convinced you know something, no one can persuade you to otherwise. Dickheaded is the term he used, I believe. Now is a chance to get her to tell me the rest of the story. Yay, more talking! And my throat's gonna be destroyed today. I feel like I was more than a little perplexed at first. It's just that you did it, yet there was no incriminating evidence. That's when it hit me. It's not you. It's not that you're it's that you're incapable of doing it. So because of a certain individual. 
intriguing notion. Certain individual, you say. So you think I am protecting this person? Protecting? No, I think afraid of is more like it. If I'm not mistaken, the person in question may have persuaded you to silence. Your argument seems right. May I ask, is this person you're speaking of? The one I'm supposedly so frightened of? What is this person's name? Obviously, it's the attorney's badge! Oh, Miss Sky? You are addressing the chief prosecutor. Do not forget your place. I take it she's still not ready to spill the beans. My apologies. Could you please tell me a bit more about the circumstances? We were partners until two years ago. I respect him as a detective. Assuming he is respectable, then tell me something. Why would he try to hide his crimes? His crimes. Both you and Edgerith will be brought before our board of inquiry for what you did. Specifically, hiding and forging evidence. Of course, these are serious offenses. Why is it though that Chief Gant's name was never mentioned? Chief Gant. Edgar Thin, you know the truth behind the forgery. The only party who could have possibly, possible. The only party who could have possibly. Bill... <laughs> wait, wait! <laughs> Whatever. Investigating the evidence was me. I had access because I was second in command of that research. Yes, you, but one other. David Gant. If you intend to accuse Chief Gant, you'll need more than just words. Show me proof that Chief Gant falsified evidence in that case. <laughs> yeah, proof of Chief's Chief wrong. Here it is. That evidence proves someone is doing something wrong, alright. But it's not the Chief. Who could- who would that- why you, of course. Me? Yes, you. You seriously believe what you're saying, don't you? Now that's scary. I, uh, you seem to have the ma makings of a criminal in you. What, with your all your, your fallacious accusations, care to spend tonight in the next cell? If you ask me, you're the scary one. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. I mean, well, if you did, then there'll be another talk option. I, I did present. There's another talk option then. Should we another talking options, sir? <laughs> oh. Hello? Oh, wait. Hey. Yeah. I'm supposed to you go back. You know you gotta no you gotta you gotta try that again. It's like Oh oh yeah because I failed the first time that's why. Yeah, if you failed it's so you have to you have to do it, you have to try that again. It present you know who. You have to present you know what. I just found this in the same chief. The star piece and the strip of cloth. Do you know what these are? They're pieces of evidence from the SM9 incident. I... The person concealing evidence, no, then Chief Gant himself. Now tell me, what do you think you believe in? What? Touche, Mr. Wright. Touched. Th doesn't that just mean touched? It says you submissed. I cannot disobey the Chief's orders. Even if it means being found guilty for murder. Why not? Come now, Mr. Wright. You can't possibly expect me to be able to tell you that. Three days ago, I had no choice but to cooperate in the murder of Detective Goodman. Or else, or perhaps I should say, follow orders. Yes, that's where I can cooperate. Oh, there it is. Although I can't tell you the details, I can say that I was given an order that day. I need you to dispose of this dude's body. You find some trunk of Miles Edwards' car. If you're gonna, if you're what? Come on. Oh, he just wanted to make create a witness. That's why. Just as I suspected. Despite what everyone believes, you were not the one who murdered Jessica Goodman. Correct. 
I was trying to take the body out of under his car. The trunk was broken. I discovered that murder weapon while inspecting the body. Murder weapon? You mean I ever did with this knife? No. When I found the body, the knife, this knife was stuck in it. The knife from this online incident. Serial killer Joe Dark's knife. I couldn't just leave that knife in it. So I took it out and st stabbed it with another knife! <laughs> that would be Edred's knife? That's right. Even though he was already dead, my hands were shaking and thought I was stabbing him. So I ended up cutting my hand. How do you cut up your hand when you're gonna stab someone? That's the reason for the bandage on your right hand. It seems like the, the, that I got blood on the victim's shoes as well. And then... She saw me as I plunged the knife. Star, okay. Why did you need to hide Dark's knife so badly? It took a lot of work to finally close the Dark case two years ago. It was always. I didn't want it to be opened again. My intent was to prevent that. Whatever, by whatever means possible. So you hit Dark's knife. The weapon is to stab the detective was evidence in Joe Dark's case. If word got out, which which it would, the reporters would have a field day with that. So you grab the knife and you scratch and hit it. In Edgar's exhaust pipe. Alright, then I called my sister. To tell her what happened and asked her to hide the knife. That was inside my mouth. You asked that now? to know about this. That would explain why Emma is so confident. Well, honest innocence. Speaking of phone calls, I had a bad feeling about that one of them that day. Bad feeling. The truth is, after I received those orders from Chief Gant, the first thing I did was make a phone call. A phone call to Patrolman Jake Marshall. Marshall, I don't know if you call him. <laughs> the investigator for SL9 incident had been murdered. I wanted that fact to be kept hidden and I needed help. Was the only other person I could trust, or at least I thought I could trust him at the time. Although it seems that after I spoke to him, he went off on an escapade of his own. I mean, not wanting the case to die, he decided to take things into his own hands. He disguised himself as Officer Goodman and tried to steal that evidence. He already stolen the ID card, but it seems he had made up his mind to break into the evidence room. After my phone call, Doubts he must have had disappeared. Your phone call calls a hip incident in the evidence room. I'm afraid that's all I can tell you. But Lana, you've earned my respect, Mr. Wright, both as a defense attorney and an investigator. Now please, don't pursue this any further in court tomorrow. Tomorrow's trial is only one way to drive off Lana's demons. I gotta get to the bottom of everything. Death of Goodman's real murder. Murder. And what went down in the chief's office two years ago. Oh my god! We got three more. Three more to go. Well, you're at, well, time for the final trial day. <laughs> this is it. This is the, the last day. day. I'll be alright, but there's no defendant. I've been trying to reach Lana all morning. Where should she be? And where's Emma for all that matter? It seems as if something's been happening behind the scenes. Edgeworth? No, oh, you, you've already figured it out. God, for thee. Our old pal, for thee. Pretty strong hunch. Looks like I'm not the only one who's figured it out. I know the only reason this trial didn't reach a verdict yesterday is because there was a still a room for doubt on this ID record. If that number doesn't belong to the so then no doubt we're all After all, he hasn't been officially charged with anything. True. Not yet. In any event, once all doubt has been removed. 
remove from that list, I can call for a ruling on the defendant. Five minutes after the trial starts, well, Lana will be found guilty. But she didn't do it. I figured you'd say as much. So I came here to hear what you have to say. It's the first time he's ever done something like this. <coughs> Lana's hiding something. The only way we'll ever do the truth is to draw it out of her own mind. The truth? Everything goes back to the SO9 incident. Nobody's gonna. Today's the last one. Ugh. Oh god. You don't have time to reminisce about the past. That depends on you. If she's found guilty, you'll lose your only chance to find what, out what really happened. I'll think about it. See you in the court. Right. Hmm. <laughs> Wrong! I'm gonna find out what Chief Gap has on her. Now it's now. There's an session for the trial of Miss Lana Scott. The defense is ready, Your Honor. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. Normally, this is when the prosecution performs an opening statement. Huh? But before that, police chief has a proposal to me. Chief Gant. Good morning, folks. How's everyone doing? Hey, you, Chief. Been back to the pool yet? No, I've been drowning enough as it is in my work. Oh, well, that's a good one. I don't think I can top that. If you don't mind me asking, Chief, what exactly is this proposal of yours? Lana, that is to say, the defendant, has asked me if she could speak directly to the court. She wants to do what? Having heard what she intends to say, I feel she should have granted her request. In the end, this should save everyone a lot of time and trouble. What do you want to say, Lana? What's this all about, defendant? I'd just like to say, make one simple request and I'll be finished. Well then, what's your request? Your Honor, I'd like you to put an immediate end to this trial. Uh, I confess to all charges against me. February 21st of this year, I murdered just like Bruce Duke. In the underground parking lot of the prosecutor's office. No, Lana. You can't. Your Honor, the defense claim does not try to change the defense's plea. In that case, Mr. Wright, I no longer require your services. But Lana, Your Honor, I hereby forfeit my right to, to an attorney. The prosecution may lack the thorough evidence against me, but it has sufficiently proven this case through testimony and circumstantial evidence. I would like you to render your verdict now, if you please. The defendant certainly has the right to self-representation. Her request is legally valid, although this is an unpre unprece unprecedented situation. This is no further need to continue this. Trial? What kind of trial is this? This can't be happening. Here's the time for the verdict has arrived. This court finds the defendant. Edgeworth. Mr. Edgeworth, the prosecution has not yet proven the defendant guilty beyond reasonable doubt. Any ruling with, at this state would be, certainly be premature. Come, come now, worthy. I understand this is a difficult time for you, but why don't you just be a good little boy? Shut the hell up! Hmm? I don't think I care for your tone, Chief T. Chief T. Chief Gant, Tant, I said Tant, <laughs> he said dude, trading another revocation to cover up your past mistakes, sorry, but I'm no longer the naive little boy you would have me be. With this sudden confession from the defendant, it's obvious to me some kind of deal was struck behind the scenes. Some kind of deal. Not everyone operates as you do, Worthy. I thought so. Your Honor, the prosecution would like to change its first witness. As its first witness, the prosecution would like to call me Miss Emma Sky. I request the court hears her testimony. Mr. Edgeworth, I'm exercising my right to self-representation. I don't think we need to con continue. I don't care what you think, Miss Sky. <laughs> the exposure of truth sometimes results in tragedy. However, no matter how tragic the truth may be, it would be an even greater tragedy. 
capture everyone's eyes from it. Very well. The court shall grant the prosecution's request. That's okay with you, right, Chief Gant? Worthy? You'll live to regret this. Mark my words. Oh, we'll see, Gant. Well, Miss Emma Sky, please take the stand. I wonder who was. I wonder who the prosecution originally was going to call. I, I, I wonder. It looks like Edgeworth has decided to take the horse by the reins. Like, what was Edgeworth originally going to call, but then changed to Emma? Oh, that's the witness. Please state your name out in observation. Um, my name is Jay. I mean, my name is Emma. I'm a Scott. <laughs> Procuration, I'm Lana's little sister. That's a job. And I want to be a scientific investigator. Two years ago, you encountered the serial killer, Joe Dark. Well, the Joe Dark killer. That's great. Yes, yes. I'm trying my hardest to forget about that, though. Sorry, but I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you to recall those events one more time. Mr. Edgeworth, please remember this trial concerns the murder of the good man. Is this and this an incident that was that was resolved two years ago? Really, that all that relevant? Yes, it most certainly is. Well, okay then. <laughs> you sure came in fast. <laughs> now, please testify about what happened to you two years ago. bound to lead to the truth behind this trial. And we'll see you in the next trial when we actually do some cross-examining. 